It's been six months since you've had the baby and you should not be looking like that. Your son's clearly gay. When I asked her to marry me, she teared up and told me not just yet. What's up everybody? My name is Amir Odom and in today's video, we're gonna be reading some Reddit stories, specifically, am I the a-hole? This is where people come to be judged by the comment section to figure out if the original poster was being an a-hole or if someone in their story was being an a-hole. And I want your opinion too. So let me know in the comments below if you agree with my assessment or if you have a differing opinion, I'd love to hear it. Am I the a-hole for not pretending my son isn't gay? My son, K, 16 male, has been best friends with D, 17 male, since second grade. They attached to each other very quickly and it became normal for them to go everywhere together. D has basically become a bonus son for me and K is viewed the same way by D's family. D has multiple sets of clothes at our house and K at his. It got to the point where our families would just celebrate holidays together. None of us minded this at all and we've all become pretty close as a result. Because of this, the boys have a lot of behaviors that may be considered strange by anyone not used to it. They'll sometimes sleep in the same bed, they'll share clothes and food, they'll sleep side by side for hours just doing their own thing without saying a word to each other. When the boys were 13, I once caught them kissing. Huh? They both assured to me, I would have, I must have been terrifying. Uh, they both, <laughs> they both assured to me that they were just curious and wanted to know what they were getting into once they started kissing girls. I was willing to believe it because 13 year olds are just like that sometimes and I never questioned it too much until recently. Okay. A few weeks ago, Kay was, ac ooh, Kay was accused of his 14 year old cousin. She has had a history of mental illness and some smaller lies, but we took it very seriously. At some point in our discussions about it, Kay told us he was gay. Some days later, his location at the time that well, he was accused was proven and the cousin had admitted that she had lied. Well, that first off, that's horrible and the cousin needs to be out of the picture and I hope that cousin got in the right amount of trouble. I recently sat down with Kay and told him that all the rules had applied to him having female friends over now apply to males with some exceptions for D. They were allowed to sleep over still, but not in the same bed anymore and the door needs to remain open. Kay was very upset by these rules because while he is gay, he felt cornered into coming out and then he insists he and D are just friends. I sympathize with how shitty of a situation his coming out was, but also just don't want to pretend he isn't gay. These are the same expectations I'd have if D was a girl or if K had came out on his own. He's been really annoyed with these rules, not just because of the rules themselves, but because of what caused him to be set and doesn't think they should be there because he doesn't like how he has to out himself. Some other family has been involved in themselves suggesting I'm going to ask for this, so am I. <sighs> Honestly, you're the parent, it's your house, your rules, but I will say you're a little bit of an a-hole. For so long, what you said 13 and now the guy's 16 now, for about four years, three, four years now, you've been ignoring the fact that your son's clearly gay and having to sleep over with his best friend who's a guy, maybe they are just friends, what, whatever would take what he says, but to all of a sudden enact these rules, it's consistent because you obviously would have these rules if you had a daughter, but it's also a little bit not fair because you ignored the fact you you've acknowledged how different their relationship already is. You've acknowledged they sleep in the same bed. You acknowledge you caught caught them kissing. So for so long you've been playing the charade. You have been pretending that he was gay, and now that he's out, you're switching it up on him. That just that doesn't make sense to me. Because why are you switching it up now? Yes, you know he's gay. But you clearly have known. But on the other hand, it's like, you are the parent. You can make the rules. So you're a little bit of a-hole, but not the most to me. Let's see what the comment has to say. The house rules were the same for so long that it's almost pointless to change them now because of this. I agree. If it was ever okay for two clearly curious boys to share a bed, then not much has changed. They don't even appear to be in a relationship. I refuse to call you a-hole because you're not, no matter what you decide, it's very much appreciated that you do not have different standards for your son as you would your daughter, right? It's ultimately your house and your house rules, but maybe give yourself some leeway on what you should be doing. You are a good parent and there is no rule book for the situation. Your house policies on co-sleeping were already a little non-traditional and whatever was going on has certainly already happened. If your goal is to prevent sex during the nighttime hours while in bed, you win, but you would never will succeed the rest of the hours of the day. It just is what it is at this point. You've got yourself a young man, maybe just proceed as he would for the next phase of his life. He's going to be a legal adult in no time and bringing significant others in a home on holiday break. That's the thing to like why change now so late in the game, especially in regards like you don't want, like if I had a 17 year old, would I allow him to have sleepovers knowing he's gay? 
with his friends yeah i would just trust him i would i i would throw that bone and throw that trust and say hey you say this is just a friend y'all can sleep over do whatever i don't care but the second you tell me you have a boyfriend then i'm gonna ask for a little bit more respect and you know a little more standards to go on in the house but your friends i mean whatever someone else said i'm the parent of an adult gay son so i hope you're open to someone who has a little bit of experience look if you don't want your 16 year old son to have sleep over with a boyfriend in your home okay your house your rules but unless and until k tells you that he and d are in a relationship you have no reason to assume d is anything more than what he's always been your son's best friend now why on earth would you start treating your son and d any differently than you have in the past don't start putting barriers up it took a lot of guts for your son to come out regardless of the circumstances be thankful that he trusted you enough to tell you something that deeply personal about himself and he's not wasting years in the closet show him nothing has changes he's still your boy and you still love him and you trust him the same as you always have and if it does turn out that D is also gay and he and K decide they want to have something more than a friendship, cross that bridge when you come to it. You're a very gentle a-hole, not because you're refusing to pretend your son isn't gay, but because you're tempering your trust with your son because you found out he's gay. I don't think that's your intention. Fair. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, This is really interesting situation because the title is am i the a-hole for not pretending my son isn't gay whole time you've been pretending since he was 13 you caught him kissing another dude in his bed so now that he's older about to be 16 17 don't why are you switching it up now am i the a-hole for leaving my wife in another country after she 33 female hit me Oop, 37 male i went on a trip to turkey in Istanbul with my wife my parents and her mom and sister my wife and i both travel frequently for work alone she usually travels internationally and i usually travel domestically it was the first time I met her family in person. About a week into our vacation, we got into a very heated fight. She hit me intentionally with force. I am, ooh, I immediately packed, booked my next flight back to the US and left. My parents happened to be heading home the same day, so we were on the same flight. I didn't lay a hand on her before or after, nor did I use some sort of offensive insult. Her explanation was that I wasn't seeing her point and she was desperate for me to hear her and hit me out of desperation. Girl, what? You can't be hitting nobody. We've never been physical before or afterwards, but after, give or take, six months, she still isn't over the fact that I left and doesn't feel like I was justified for leaving, nor do I feel like she really thinks she was in the wrong for doing it. Her family also hates me for it and feel like she did nothing wrong. She hit... Why is it... I feel like girls get a pass all the time. You know... Why is it when a girl hits a guy, you don't want all this equality, okay? Equal rights, equal fights, okay? You want all this equality. When a woman hits a man, the man has to take it. But lo and behold, this situation was flipped and he molly whopped her ass, then what? It makes no sense. I feel 100% justified in leaving as you should, though it wasn't the best choice. Hindsight is always twenty twenty. Though it wasn't the best choice, why did, why is you not leaving not the best choice? She literally hit you. If it matters, there was a mutual fault for the fight and I left her with a substantial amount of cash. She wasn't any risk or peril, thanks in advance. Some edits, they're still married. Not that kind of lead, though it has been rough times since. She wants me to add in that it was a slap to the cheek, not a punch. So they're still together. They're still married and she's over here editing the post. Are you the a-hole for leaving your wife? And no, you should be gone. Why are you not left? No, you're not the a-hole. She's the a-hole. She's psycho. She's manipulative. She hit you, so you leave. What does comment say? Not the a-hole. Her response and famous response is why men's claim of abuse falls on deaf ears. Exactly. It's not like she did it as a one-time thing and is showing remorse. Okay, fine, move on. But she still thinks it's okay. That's the problem. She thinks that what she did was fine. Like she thinks she's not in the wrong at all. You're not the a-hole. She hit you and you should be gone. Am I the a-hole for breaking up with my girlfriend after she rejected my proposal twice? Sierra and I have been dating for four years. I absolutely love her and I felt like she was my soulmate. I knew I wanted to propose two years into dating but decided to wait one more year so that I can get in a better situation financially. I respect that. Last year, I proposed. It was a private proposal on the beach where we went on our first date. She looked at me and said, I want to marry you, but not right now. She said she wasn't in the right space personally to get engaged and to give her some time. That stung, but I was okay with it. After all, I put up proposing so I can be in a good position. It's only fair I give her that chance. That I can get behind. 
like you said, you gave yourself some time, so it's where you give her some time. It's been a year since then, and I decided to propose again. This time, I asked our friends to help me set it up. Oh, God. I helped my friends to set it up because I wanted to do something nicer. We orchestrated a nice dinner and a proposal in front of a nice fountain in the city's botanical garden. Everything was ready, dinner went great, and we went down to the fountain. She saw the roses and everything, then I got down on one knee and I asked her to marry me. She teared up and told me not just yet. This stunk really bad. I knew I wanted her in my life forever, but this is the second time she's turned me down. I asked her why and she told me the same thing as last year. It's literally been a year. Um, I asked her if someone was holding holding her back, maybe a family or friend, and she just said, I just want to make sure that this will work. Girl, what? This hurt me more than two rejections. I told her if after four years she isn't sure, then what the hell, like, what will make her sure? She asked me to give her time, and I told her no. I told her that I'm not going to keep wasting my time and love if she's going to keep saying no. I told her that I can't do this anymore. She began begging me not to leave, and I said, fine, I'll marry you. Just please don't go. That made me mad, but I didn't say anything and I left. Fine, I'll marry you. See, that's called divorcing at 40. My phone has been blowing up with some of our friends, her parents, and her telling me that I'm an a-hole for throwing away a four-year relationship because she said no, and I'm being a big baby. She just needs some time. She said no twice, and it's been four years. Anybody got time for that? The other half of our friends aren't on my side, but they're not on hers either. I don't think I'm an a-hole for this. Did I overreact? Am I the a-hole? If so, how much more time am I supposed to give her? Edit, we're both 29 years old. Listen, them women's bio... No, no, no shade, them biological clock, clock's ticking. If you're trying to have kids, you can't be sitting here trying to lollygag with the same girl the whole time like she's not even decided if she wants to be with her husband or not after four years. And two proposals. Edit two, the second proposal wasn't done in front of my friends. They just helped me plan it and stuff. It was just her and I. Okay. So it's not like she turned you down in front of everybody else. That's what I thought at first. Edit three, we had discussed marriage shortly before I proposed the first time. She was into it and even told me that she couldn't see herself with anyone else. She seemed eager about the idea of marriage, which is why I was shocked the first time and then angry the second time. You're not the a-hole. You just need to be gone. Your friends are bugging out. It, that's totally fair. If after four years and two proposals, she's still not sure, then I'm just not the one. Let's see what the comments say. Someone said, not the a-hole. If after four years, she's not ready to marry you, then I doubt she wants to. When she asked for time after the first proposal, she should have explained everything and said why she needed time in depth. You, Clea, were ready for marriage and wanted to take that step. After four years, that's completely reasonable. I agree. Move on and find someone more compatible with you. The fact that she changed her mind about it after you left and then had friends and family messaging you and insulting you just means you dodged a massive burden by not actually marrying her. Big facts, no cap, get the printer, fax machine copy and paste that's it completely right you dodged a bullet from that because she's clearly just super messy and not mature enough for relationship as it is four years two proposals no you're not the a-hole am i the a-hole for ending things after he refused to buy me tampons I, 27-year-old female, had Friday night date plans with my 28 male boyfriend. There were a few things I needed to do before driving the 35 minutes to his place to have our dinner and movie. I had just got off work and needed to shower, care for my pet, pack for the night, and clean for a bit before heading out. Rightly before my shift ended, I got my period, yay. And with that came super bad cramps, back pain, headache, and all the fun period feelings that I didn't expect, and so I planned on heading to a nearby store the closer I got to his place to grab tampons and some period pads. Right before I showered, I get an ETA call from him. I tell him the time he should expect me and gave him a heads up that I'm not feeling too well. He for his sympathy and then ask if there's anything he can do to help me. I hesitate before I answer because in the past, he's asked, I've said, and nothing came of it. I decided to just give it a shot and ask if he could run to the store since it's about a two minute drive from his place to grab the items for me. I said I can send you the exact products I need, which is just about three, and also Venmo him. He chuckles and said, yeah, no. <laughs> he chuckles and said, yeah, no, we can just go together and grab those things. I'm shocked and state that would just be a waste. I'll just run there myself. Some time later, I finish my task, run to the store, grab my period products, and head to his place. It's once we're sitting down later that I asked him why didn't he want to grab the items for me after he asked me if he could help. Fair. How are you going to ask? Listen, it's 2024. These people got to go. How are you going to ask me for help, and then I tell you the help I need, and then you tell me no? Then you didn't really want to help me. It's not like I'm asking you to do something illegal, do something crazy. I'm asking you to get me the person you're dating period items because I, i'm in pain and it'll make time quicker girl what he answers i'm not 
I'm not gonna embarrass myself. We could have, gra have grabbed it together. Besides, I didn't want to get up. I was in the middle of a game. After hearing this, I ended things and left. Good. Yo man wanna turn off a video game to go get you some period products? What's gonna happen if y'all have a child? He's just gonna be a deadbeat daddy? Edit, it was amazing to read through all the stories, advice, and comments. There are amazing husbands, dads, brothers, wives, sisters, friends out there in the comments that have truly made me look at all this in a different light. A really good light. Thank you to the bottom of my heart. The OP original poster, you're not an a-hole at all. The boyfriend is for not wanting to put down his game and not wanting to get period products because he'd be embarrassed. Listen, I'm gay. I am very, I, no. The cooter cat is not for me. I'm scared of it. I'm running away. I don't need it in my life. However, if any of my girlfriends needed a period or not, not needed a period, needed a, a tampon, a, a maxi pad, any of that kind of stuff, I'm gonna be confused, but I'm gonna go in the store and buy it. And I've asked for a Venmo. It's on me. I'll get just a my doll too. Whatever. Oh my gosh. Little story. When I was in seventh, was it seventh grade? Yeah, it was seventh grade. I told my sister I had a headache and she gave me my doll and I took it and I was reading it and it told me it was for like menstrual cramps and I Googled menstrual and it told me it's about periods and then I thought that I was going to transition. My sister gave me a my doll and I thought I was going to grow a cooter cat. That happened. Anyways, like I said before, I'm not fond of it, but I'll go get it. That's not going to embarrass me. Someone else said, 15 years ago, I'm on a motorcycle with friends, and I get a text from my daughter. She had just started her first period. I cut my right short and beeline to the drugstore. There I was, standing in the aisle, full of, <laughs> in full leather, trying to figure out what she needed. Luckily, a customer saw my confusion and offered to help. I explained my situation, and she helped me get what I needed. I have never been embarrassed by sending in products. Confused as hell, but never embarrassed. Anyone who won't go out their comfort zone to help someone they love isn't worth being loved. That echo? Oh my gosh. Period. Not worth being loved. You are not the a-hole for ending it for someone who wouldn't want to get you period products. That don't make no sense. And the fact that you've been questioning yourself if you're the a-hole is crazy to me because you're clearly not. The boy's a mess. Am I the butthole for telling my postpartum wife the same thing she told me? So this is a throwaway and I really need some advice. So some backstory about me. When I was younger, I was bullied for being fat basically and my mother wouldn't help me lose weight so when i got to college i lost a lot of weight and gained muscle and now i'm 6'5 and 240 pounds so me and my wife have been together since we were 25 we are now 32 and had our baby six months ago she's had a hard time taking care of him so i've been helping in any way i can so i haven't had much time to go back to the gym I haven't gained that much weight, maybe 25 to 30 pounds, which is okay because I still look good. I plan to go back to the gym when he gets on a better sleep schedule and my wife isn't so tired. She's recently been telling me that I'm getting fat and I'm not as, as attractive as before. I mainly brush her comments off, but she's been doing this a lot recently and has been making me upset. I told her this and she said she'll stop, but she hasn't. So if I told her, if you don't stop, I'm going to say something you aren't not going to want to hear. And she laughed and said, okay, while rolling her eyes. So on Monday, she had called me a fatty. Who, what? How are you in relationships like this? How are you having, how are you like uh, bringing offspring? How, how are you procreating with these people? I, listen, the fact that she feels comfortable calling you fatty, knowing your childhood trauma, who are these people? So on Monday she had called me a fatty and said that I need to hit the gym before she calls my old classmates. I said I need to hit the gym. It's been six months since you have had the baby and you should not be looking like, ooh. I said, I need to hit the gym. It's been six months since you've had the baby and you should not be looking like that. She ran off crying. I haven't apologized because I don't know if I'm wrong or not. If I'm wrong, will I go and apologize? But I don't know, so am I the a-hole? Edit, she has not had any body issues in the past. She's always feel like whatever her weight is, she is and that's, it's just the way she is. Yes, I do love her body and I find it attractive. So I just said that to get her back. You're not the a-hole to me. She over here sitting here bullying you, calling you fatty, telling you you're gaining weight whole time. You're being more helpful than a lot of dudes out there with the child in the first place. What more can she ask for? So the fact that you're, you're working, you're providing, you're, you're doing all these things, you're helping out with the baby. Okay, you put on a few pounds. And she has the audacity to say, um, yeah, you're getting a little big. How are you going to call him fatty? And then he throw it back and say, okay, we well, had that baby six months ago. You shouldn't be looking like this. You run off crying. 
women followers, I'd love to have your opinion. Cause I feel like a lot of women want equality, but when they get equality, they pissed. He threw her right back. He's not the a-hole. I'm going to be brutally honest. She's being a B. Our boys nearing the nine with Mark and my weight has been JoJoing a bit. I've already got extra on me and my partner doesn't say that I'm a fatty. I've also noticed that while back that my partner had been gaining a bit of weight and a bit more dad bod now, but he still looks great. I've changed our diet a bit so we can both lose a bit of weight. So my point is it's okay to notice, but it's rude to go about it that way. Fair, you're not the a-hole. I cannot wait to read this comment section. I'm so curious to know who is the a-hole to you in these situations. What's your opinions? Are, are, are you coming for me? Am I crazy for thinking some of these things? Let me know below. Let Also, let me know if you like this. If you want more Am I the A-hole stories, more just Reddit stories in general, totally down to do it. It was super fun. And thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. And I'd love to hear your comments below. As always, you liking and sharing and subscribing means the world to me. This channel is growing at a rapid rate. I am super happy and thrilled about it. And as always, I hope that you know that you can and will become anything you put your mind to is just a matter of being focused putting in tunnel vision and really just manifesting and creating the life you wish to live in knowing you can achieve it knowing you are worthy of it knowing that the work that you put in is what you get out so what are you doing to change your life what are you actively doing every day to change your life for the better in, in your future think about that do that and get it done so with that being said i'll see you in the next video and i love you guys a ton